Hello, hello, Ahmed Kanani here with another video from Lucre Studio Tips and Tricks series here. And today we want to take a look at the curious case of Google Search Console. Now, what do I mean by that? This was a question from someone in the Facebook group that has a really strange situation with the reporting on their Search Console data in Lucre Studio. It was really weird and it took me a couple of hours to figure it out, but in the process, I learned something very interesting that I'm excited to share it with you. Now, even if you do not report on Search Console, even if you are not at all interested about SEO, please watch this because you will learn how to troubleshoot some weird situations in Lucre Studio and how to figure out what is happening behind the scenes. Okay, so let's begin. Here's um, our setup in which I've tried to replicate the issue. I connected to a Google Search Console account using the URL impressions way of doing it, not the domain way uh, I will show you. So if I go to edit mode and go to resource, manage added data sources, and try to edit this one, we can see that I've connected to seawork.com, URL impressions, and web as the search type. Okay, so I don't need to reconnect to this. I can just cancel. And here, if we take a look at the dimensions and metrics that we've got access to, we've got country, date, device, category, Google property, landing page, query, which is the search query that the user put in the um, search box when they were searching for something, and then some metric, average position, impressions, URL clicks, and click-through rate. Here, I added a metric to this scorecard the number of URL clicks. It's blue, it's a metric. It shows how many clicks that we have during this time frame, which is the last 28 days. This one, I added query. Query is a dimension. How did I manage to make a dimension a metric? I just dragged it, dropped it, and Lucre Studio automatically sets the aggregation method to count distinct, meaning that it will look at all the values in this query dimension, all the text values, and counts the distinct, the unique values of query within this dimension. So it basically telling us, I've seen 2,935 unique queries in this data set in this date range. So far, so good. The metric that we wanted to create and calculate was very easy the ratio between clicks and queries. We want to divide URL clicks to the number of queries. So what do you expect? So the expectation would be that we would divide 938 by 2,935, which is around equal to 1,000 divided by 3,000. So I would expect to see 33.3, 33.4 as a percentage. Now, let's try to do it. I'm going to add a newer scorecard here. First of all, let's add URL clicks, 938. Now, I want to create a calculated field, and I'm going to call it URL clicks divided by number of queries, okay? But I start a step by step. First of all, I want the number of URL clicks. I can simply put the metric as the formula. It works, right? I can apply it, it's a number, it shows the exact number 938. Now, the second part of the division is the count of queries or count distinct of queries, which I can use a function count distinct of query, right, as a dimension. And this is a number two, and I apply it, and I will get the exact same number that is over here because this is count distinct of queries. This is count distinct of queries. Now I want to divide 938, which we just seen, the value for URL clicks, by count distinct of queries. So we expect something around 33%. I would change the data type from number to percent because we expect a percentage. And let's apply that. It's still a number. Okay, we have to reapply that. Come on, percentage, apply. 2%? It's weird. It's one tenth of what we expect. So either it is putting uh, 10 times as much as the number of queries, which cannot be possible, or it's 
putting some 93, 92 as the number of URL clicks, which is still impossible. We've already tried it. We tried with URL clicks, let me control X that, and it shows the clicks are accurate. What we expect, I can control X the other half of it. And so every part of the division is correct, but we are getting something that is completely unexpected. And it was really surprising and it took me some try and error to figure it out. But the troubleshooting process was interesting. If you just want to fix it, I will tell you what is the solution. You select both of these, you right click, you blend data. And whenever you blend data and Google Studio knows that you want to do something with the metrics, with the scorecards that are part of the blend. So it divides one of them over another. As soon as I blend, I will have a new scorecard connected to blended data, right? And I'm getting the exact percentage than I expected. Blending and then having query and URL clicks within the blend. Let's take a look at the blend. Like cross join URL clicks, query, auto date range, no filter applied, just this number and that number. And in the formula here, within the blended data set, it is summing URL clicks divided by sum of query, which is okay. And it's giving us the correct value, but this is not giving us correct value. So what I do in this situation and in similar situations is that I will try to figure out what is happening in that raw data set. Okay. Why blended data works, why this doesn't work. This is a division and I need to know what are the breakdown. I want to take a look at raw data in a table format and try to recreate the divisions and the summing of the URL clicks and queries myself to see what Looker Studio is doing. And where is it going wrong? So I add a table, right? A simple table here. We've got Google property, which we only have one value for, which is good. URL clicks, I can see 938. Instead of clicks, I can drag and drop queries and number of queries. Again, I'm looking at the correct number, but look at this one. I'm going to add URL clicks to this table. I'm not going to replace queries. I want both metrics in this table and look what happens. 86. What? Let me remove query. There, there's no filter here, right? There's just sorting. There's no filter. I just created this table. The date range is exactly the same auto, which is last 28 days. Nothing is happening here, which is expected as in a troubleshooting situation. I remove query from the table and look at the number of URL clicks. They go back. So it seems that some of these URL clicks are not happy with query being involved with them in a similar table. So they say, we don't like queries. If query is here, we want to go away. We cannot be in the same table with queries involved. I don't know. I, I don't know really at this point. Now I know, but when I was troubleshooting, I didn't know what is happening. Why some of the clicks are not happy with the queries until I applied another dimension. So I said, okay, let's take a look at queries as a dimension, not just the number of queries, but the actual queries as a dimension. So we've got 2,925 rows, which is correct. This is the number of unique queries that we can see in this uh, date range. Look at the numbers, 11, 10, 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 3. And as soon as I reach to row number 30, it goes to zero and it's sorted by the number of URL clicks. So if I go to next page, everything is zeros. I've tested it up until the last page. It is sorted by a number of URL clicks descending. So these are the only values in this table and they do not add up to 986. If all 37 rows were 10, we would have gotten 370, but these are not even all 10. So we're looking at some 90, like uh, 20 here, 12 here, 9 here, 10 here, 90, 96 maximum. So where are the rest of URL clicks? What I figured out is that they are assigned with queries that Google Search Console through their API doesn't want to tell us which queries they were, maybe because of privacy, maybe because of, I don't know what thresholding or something else. 
Google Search Console does not give us the query for the rest of the clicks. That's why whenever we add query into the equation, the rest of the clicks will go away. If I add landing page, oh, this is sort. If I add landing page here instead of query, then I get bigger numbers, 250. So I have 500 here, about 200 more here. So 700 up to this point, 800, and then something else, it actually adds up to 936, right? With landing page, it does. With query, it doesn't. Some of the URL clicks go away. So what is happening here? If I add the summary row, which is interesting because summary shows 938, but the actual numbers do not end up um, to be 938. And the reason is that for summary, there is a new API call from Lucre Studio to Search Console Data Connector. And for the table, there is another API call. And in this summary API call, Lucre Studio is simply asking, what was the number of clicks? And Google Search Console is replying 938. But in the um, other API call, Looker Studio is asking what was the number of clicks per query and Search Console is not happy to tell us the rest of the queries. It could have said not set. It could have said uh, not provided and the rest of the click. I don't want to give you the query, the rest of the click, but it just decided to drop that row from the data set, which is really strange and causes lots of problems. Now, if I go to Search Console uh, user interface, apply last 28 days, and this is, I need to refresh this one because this is a bit old, but yeah, quite the same. So I get about a thousand clicks. So there's a difference between the interface and the, the API, which is uh, being used by the Google Lucre Studio data connector. But I get a thousand clicks. If I'm going to look at the clicks per query, I get the same information, 12, 11, and quickly, let's say 250, quickly dropping to zero. Here, the rest are all zeros. But if I look at pages, I get the bigger numbers, right? So they add up to the actual 1,938 something. So even in the interface, it shows total clicks, but if you're looking at the query as a breakdown, you cannot see all those clicks and which queries are they assigned to, okay? That's it, that is the problem, and because in this little formula, we are asking for clicks and query at the same time. The rest of the URL clicks are being dropped from this metric. So if something around 96, 92 is being divided by 2,935, and it's resulting in 2.9%, 3%. But why blended data set works? This, these are the same metrics, right? This is count distinct of query, and this is URL clicks. The reason is that in a blended data set, we have two tables, table one, table two. This table is only asking for URL clicks. This table is only asking for queries. In this table, we are not asking for URL clicks and queries, which upsets Google Search Console. If I do that, let's just try. If I do that, I expect that again, the percentage would be inaccurate. So I just added query. This was working, giving me 30% something. But now if I save this and close this, look at that, 2%, 2.9%. And if I go to blended data set and remove this again and save it and come back, I have 32%, 31.9. So that means these two tables in the blended data set are completely separate, two different API calls to Google Search Console. Each one of them returns the correct number. And only then, Looker Studio joins, cross joins this table with this table, gives us the two metrics that we're interested in. And then we can use those metrics in a formula like this. I learned a lot by going through the process. I learned a lot about how Google Search Console API is actually working and returning URL clicks and queries. I hope that you've learned something too. And until next time, thank you and bye.